Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Russia. We're looking at the new DLC truck, the Step 3364. Uh, this is a $3.99 DLC for SnowRunner. I know there's some of you out there that are like, refuse to pay extra money for extra trucks because you got the season pass and feel it should be included. However, they don't care, and this is how they're doing it. So get over it. This truck is... I believe if you're playing regular mode and not hardcore mode is definitely worth it. All right. So here we have our step 3364 configured in several different configurations. Uh, so you can see kind of the, the range of things that you can do. We're going to test these out and then I'm going to show you why I feel like this truck is definitely worthwhile um, at the price that it comes in at. Um, even if you are a diehard, I, I, I don't want this truck. I don't want anything to do with DLC trucks. Uh, I think you're going to like this truck. And and I will say, uh, if you guys remember Spin Tires, the last DLC they uh, released was a Chinese DLC, and it included a very a stripped-down version of this truck. Uh, but anyway, here we are in the base model. Um, to my left, or, well, I guess it'd really be to my right, but stage left, we have a step uh, gas model. We have it uh, loaded with monster truck tires, which I never really liked those tires, but there they are, the mud thrashers, and uh, a fuel tank. Um, and so you can use this little truck as a fuel tanker. And then to the stage right over here on my right side, we have the Gator also loaded up with, um, it's got some different headlight, a, a, a bumper and different headlight covers. Um, and it's got you know, uh, a roof rack going on there, different, you see here they have different exhaust pipes, uh, but this one has the a unique attachment that has 60 fuel and also has a repair, uh, I think it's 500 repair, 400 repair, something like that, <clears throat> along with a, a roof rack with fuel on it. Now, I think when you start the game, those will probably be locked up, but um, you can get those down the road. Um, and then behind us, behind it, we have a uh, service trailer, and we're going to pull that trailer around a little bit for testing. And this truck is loaded with the mud tires, the UOD2s, which are going to be your best off-road tires. Uh, and I think, honestly, I like those better than the mud tires, even for mud. But uh, this truck that we're in right now is the very base step. I have done no modifications to it aside from change the color. So let's go ahead and put this thing into gear. It has no snow runner. Or anything like that but the nice thing about this truck and one of the things that makes it a really powerful truck to start is the fact that out of the gate it has all-wheel drive and diff lock um, so it's gonna be like the fleet star one of those trucks that has those things right out of the gate um, if you're playing on regular mode you'll have this truck already ready to go now it's not as big as the fleet star uh, but it is a good like small mission truck it's going to be good for even doing some scouting, probably. And you can see here, we just have, these are the stock highway tires that we're driving in all this mud. And look how this truck just gets right through the mud. Gorgeous interior from the 1970s, probably 60s, maybe 50s even. And uh, so there you can see this part. And you can see we're having no difficulty whatsoever on these back roads with our standard tires so this could be a fun challenge truck uh i'm really glad we got this truck in though I'm, I'm looking for the next truck i'd like to see is the zill um and the zill has the uh um it's a little bit square looking but we had a, we used to have a zill 131 in spin tires and i'd love to see that truck come to this game now we're going to go down here and get into this marsh to test it out but we may get stuck and that's fine but i just wanted to test it so hang on one second folks all right, so we are going to go down into the mud here. And once again, default tires, default tires. Look at that. Automatic gearbox, no snow runner gearbox. <laughs> okay, now we're getting a little bogged down. But honestly, you know, for road tires, that's pretty impressive. And what stopped us, oops, I can't see uh, the bridge. What stopped us was that rock. So if we could actually go around the rock, I bet you we could get out. Yep, look at that. So once again, now, part of the reason why we're doing so well is because the truck is light. We don't have um, a lot in there. There's not a lot of weight on the truck, so we're doing fine. But look at this. I mean, like, roads, once again, folks, 
road tires. <laughs> so this is why this truck is so strong, because it's light, you can use it. It's better than a lot of the starting scouts, even with the base tires. Man, can you imagine how long it would take the Chevy to get through that, like the base Chevy truck? Forever. So this truck is really good on that stuff, and I, I think that's one of the things that makes it worthwhile. But it's also some of the flexibility. It can definitely be a good backup truck for your Scout. Uh, if you go out into the wilderness and you have a Scout and you're, you're scouting stuff and you run out of fuel or get damaged, you can have this truck nearby ready to uh, service that truck. And that's another idea for this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the service truck version. Now here's what I don't usually like these, and I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I haven't ridden or driven this truck with these monster mud tires on it. Usually I don't like them because they make the trucks too bouncy. But that could also be because usually I'm running these with the Tatra, and the Tatra is really small. This truck has a little bit more body size to it. But let's go ahead and get down into the muck where we were before and take a look and see how this truck does down in seriously muddy conditions. Uh, once again, I love the interior of this truck, and I like the way that when you paint the truck, the interior actually ends up matching the exterior, so that's pretty neat. Uh, I like when they do that. In fact, the Chevy pickup truck, as we were talking about earlier, is the only truck in the game that I've found so far that doesn't change interior colors. It stays that awful blue that Chevy was known for. <laughs> it's not that Chevy didn't do that, but usually they would, you know, if you had a gray car, they would put a burgundy interior. If you had a, um, you know, white or, or blue car, then they would put a blue interior. Brown cars would usually have like a tan interior. But here we go. We're into the deep mud. Once again, this truck uh, has all-wheel drive, has diff locks. Uh, once again, see these mud tires? I don't know. They're, they they do okay. I mean, look at this. This is pretty good. So we're just going to cruise up this river. I'm in just low gear. I think low plus will be a little too fast, and we start losing traction. So, uh, But you can see here, this is, you know, but we got a pretty heavy load on the back. But as expected, this truck just does really well. Uh, and I got to tell you, I really love the way this thing looks. I think that, for me, part of what makes this as, uh, as intriguing as it is is just because it's so freaking Russian and so freaking ugly. Um, and it's a good thing. Like, trucks, ugly trucks are good. I love ugly trucks. <laughs> and we'll stay down here in the riverbed. You can see here, we're just crushing it no problems whatsoever in deep mud the logs maybe but i will say this truck handles pretty well uh even with these big tires on usually i notice that it bounces around a lot let's get up on some drier ground and see if we can't make it bounce and test that out uh frame rates i've noticed this game lately has gotten framey in some places go look back down to low 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 right there for that deep mud see no problems whatsoever truck just pushes right through now once again these tires are going to come at level so these will not help you out beginning of the game unfortunately but you should be fine with just the stock tires as you saw we went through some pretty deep mud and the truck was fine but i want to run this thing at speed now and see how it does um on a regular road. Let's see if we bounce over. Because one of the problems that I've had with these tires on a lot of the trucks is that they make them b too bouncy. But if this truck is stable with these tires on, then hey, this could be a good thing. Uh, you will notice the truck does not steer very well when these tires are on it. Uh, we went way wide there, and that is because of the diff lock and the squishy tires all at once. But I'm finding this truck to be just fine rolling down this bouncy road. It is not bouncing all over the place like the Tatra. If you guys remember, I did some testing with that Tatra 803, and that thing, terrible with these tires. It's undrivable. But it's kind of a bad truck anyway. There's, there's the bounce. Still, not bad. It was controllable. I'm going pretty fast for off-roading. We are going to take some damage. I mean, that's it's going to happen. Boink. <laughs> but it's controllable. The truck, so, you know, I wouldn't, if I were being careful, I wouldn't be pounding down. I'd be in high gear and not pounding down that road that fast. But... You can see even through that, we, we didn't do much damage and we survived. So that's the Tatra with the mud tire configurations. Excellent truck so far. And once again, much better than some of the other trucks I've tried with these muddy tires. 
Usually I find them useless, but for this truck, they're working. Right tire for the right truck. Once again, we'll put it through some mud. And see how she does. No, no problems at all. Look at that. What a monster. Okay, and we got plenty of gas on the back to refuel the trucks that we need to refuel or support. Once again, this would be a good support truck. So last but not least, let's try the uh, road tired or the uh, off-road tired uh, step 3364. And so once again, we have our step and I'm gonna reset time to the afternoon so we can see a little bit better. Um, this has, let's see, let's look at repair units. I forgot what the numbers were. It has, I know 60 fuel. It holds um, 500 and two tires. That's actually pretty good. The service trailer is 1500. But I want to see how this truck does dragging this service trailer. And once again, we, we're going to go in a little bit lower gear. Uh, it's a small truck. And you can see there with all these extra lights, it's going to produce a lot of light at night. But we're going to put this down into the bog and test it out, see how it does with this trailer on the back. Once again, I think my ideal setup for this truck would be as a support truck. Um, I would put the fuel tanker on the truck itself and then pull behind me uh, one of these service trailers. And that way I'd have plenty of fuel and plenty of repair points. And I just keep it in the vicinity of where I'm scouting. So when the scout starts to get low on fuel, I can, you know, um, go and refill it but the nice thing about this little truck versus like the fleet star or some of those other trucks that you start with the gmc um it's small so if you get your scout into trouble somewhere up on a mountainside you're gonna have a much easier time recovering it with this uh recovering your truck with this little truck than you will with the big the big uh like let's say you're doing king of the hill where you have to go up those two mountainsides the fleet star is not going to go up those well it is but you're gonna have a really difficult time getting up there and a very it's a very dangerous job with this truck it's a little bit easier because it's a smaller truck and it handles well and it's you know it, it can fit on those little mountain roads so that's something to keep in mind one of the reasons why i like this truck because it is very flexible for even early game when you you don't have other trucks that can do that but even later in game for supporting scouts on new maps this is still a great truck for those exact same reasons and it's even more powerful because you have these attachments on it so let's once again reads denote terrible mud we may end up getting stuck with this trailer i will not i'm not gonna be mad at the truck if it does yeah we've already bogged in so this is where the worst mud is whenever you see those reads that's a sign that you're into really bad mud So we're going to have to winch our way out, which we will. The winch is done. And, you know, we've purposely put our truck into harm's way, but it's doing fine. Look at that. It pulls right up and over. Now, since the monster truck mud tires did well, I could definitely see you equipping uh, the truck with those, uh, even in this configuration where we're doing the support truck. I still tend to like the regular tires better, the way that they handle, because you you have many different road surfaces you have to deal with. And I think overall, these do better in general. Um, it doesn't mean that, you know, there aren't circumstances like this where the mud tires are going to be better, but I think in general, the off-road tires do better, so. And we're back up on the road. So we did have to winch a little bit there, but once again, not a big surprise. Let's get through a little bit more mud with this, and then I'll show you some other applications. Once again, I love the matching interior. <laughs> Mustard yellow. Ugh. Whoa. And you can show it's pretty bad roads, but we're doing just fine. So I hope that we get some more packs of classic Russian trucks like this. I really... I miss the 4320. I miss the Gaz 66. I miss the Zill, the original Zill 131 and 130. Uh, the 131's, you know, an off-road monster. The 130 is the the kind of like this truck where it's like a, a pickup truck bed. But those are usually only two-wheel drive. However, they're still pretty good off-road. 
But I miss those trucks. I wish we could get a Zill pack or a, 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 a Gaz pack. Um, but here's the first of the Russian trucks that I've seen. Well, not the first. There's a couple uh, that came with for free. Obviously, the Tatra is one of the other ones, the 803 and the 815. 815. So there we go. Good support truck. Kind of what I wanted to show you there as we go through these Russian woods. Through the mud and the slob and the spluff and the gunk. And the truck's doing just fine here in this situation. Uh, even on this terrible camber road, I wanted to see if it would tip with that. It's got, it's definitely high centered, uh, or high center of gravity, I mean. Uh, and it's just pulling through, no problems. So, good stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and try some other applications for this truck. First of all, we're gonna start a new game. Uh, not hardcore, because obviously when you do hardcore, you don't get these trucks at all. Uh, but in, if you're doing a regular uh, restart, this could be one of your go-to trucks that you keep and use. Uh, but I want to see what it comes with stock. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's hop over right now. As I'm uh, working my way back, I I thought I'd share this with you. I kind of find this interesting. This truck has several fuel tanks uh, stored under the bed there. Sadly, they don't seem to be accessible through the menu. So I don't know if that's a bug or if that's something that they did intentionally, like it's not supposed to be for you, it's supposed to be for others. But uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe if I take that, let's see what happens. If I fill from the van body add-on, let's see, refuel, van body add-on. Oh no, that's it, okay, so those are part of the van body add-on. That's Those are the extra fuel tanks. Okay, so I had seen a review where somebody said that they weren't usable, but and I'm like, well, maybe they're not. And so I'm looking at it, and no, they are usable. I don't know. We'll have to look at the flatbed truck again in, when we get over to test it out for a starter truck. Um, but I just want to point out that those are actually usable. So, Because uh, other, other people that I saw talking about the truck said that they're not. But there you go. They just got used. However, if you don't have the van add-on, you may not have those. So I don't know. But there you go. We just used them. So... I've gotten this trailer back to where it belongs, and I am going to hop over to Michigan now. I'll see you in just a second. So I've just started a new game, as you can see here, from my starter trucks. If I go into the garage, we should be able to see um, what we have in storage. And these are all the DLC trucks. You'll have everything that you've ever bought. I'm going to give you quick yeses and nos. No. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Some of these come for free. Uh, no. Yes. Uh, these came together, so you, that's a yes. That's a, I don't know. Yes. <laughs> no. These are some great trucks. They're all good. These are all trucks that are bought or, or given to you as DLC. I would say the 49X is the only one that I didn't like because it kept flipping over, but it's a decent truck. It just it tends to flip. Uh, so we have our step as one of the trucks. Now you can hear the nice thing, the base price on this truck is only slightly more expensive than a cheap Scout. Um, and we already have one in the storage, so we can just grab it. But we're once again, we're really low level, so I just want to see what do we have available right now. We have just the base engine, which is fine because with the good mileage. We do have raised av available. Put that on, man, and sell the old one. And we don't, we have bigger tires, so you can get the big tires and i would uh, actually this comes with all terrain so i would leave the rest of them are locked so leave those all terrain tires on because that you don't want to go down to highway tires if you got built in all terrains that's a great step right there um you, we have no winches available nothing's available no snore uh, we do have a short round cap snorkel i would recommend anything to get you above the water and frame add-ons you can get everything but the fuel tank now that kind of sucks because the fuel tank is pretty helpful but you can run this with a roof rack and a van body add-on though i'm gonna have to sell something to get that so let's go back to our garage let's see truck storage and once again if you have these dlc trucks you can store them otherwise you're going to, have to earn a little money before you put this truck into action or you'll just have to deal with it with nothing on it um like that would be the best you could do and then you'd have to take it out like that but be a good rescue truck so uh let's go ahead and customize a little bit more uh, and we're going to go ahead and put this, um, this guy on. 
So we have a right now a pretty capable truck that will be a good backup truck for Michigan, and then we'll drive it out a little bit, but just so you can see. Um, you can even even do this to do some scouting. Is not be careful. That top is going to be a little heavy, but we're going to go grab that scout point up top there just to show you that it's possible. Once again, built-in diff lock, built-in all-wheel drive. With this engine, we get slightly worse mileage than the Chevy, but we also carry twice as much fuel. So um, let's go ahead and see what we do. Now, once again, using this as a primary scout may not be a great idea because it's going to take you a lot longer to unlock the tires. The scouts get their mud tires and stuff earlier, but then again, we've shown this truck does really well in the mud. So it may not matter. Let's go ahead and work our way through the the gunk here. And we're going to head up to the left here, up into the mountains. This is probably going to be one of the harder ones to get for this kind of truck. But we, I'm just going to show that we can do it, hopefully without flipping. Uh, now, one of the, the trouble with doing something like this with this truck is, once again, um, if you flip, you're stuck. So you'd have to come with the pickup truck and rescue it. But if you're careful, you shouldn't have that happen anyway. And you're going to have to do some turning like that because once again this truck does not have a um, very good turn radius with those diff locks but we're getting up the mountainside no problem I would love to have an RC one of these like, a, like one that actually works well I've got an RC Zill 4320 that doesn't even run uh, kind of sucks, but and uh, we did not activate the place beyond the spruces. I don't know if I'd be willing to take this truck up that steep of a mountain. We could try it. Why don't we try it? And then we'll move on to the last thing that I think this truck is going to be very useful for um, once we've got this place beyond the spruces unlocked. And there we go once again. We found lots of stuff. Yeah. And once again, this is box stock, <laughs> except for the raised suspension that helped it a little bit to get you know, above the ground. But that'll also make us tipsy. We got this heavy thing on the back. <laughs> we can't get the fuel thing yet, so that kind of sucks. But but you can see how this could be a really, uh, a really big early game truck. Now, what's interesting is there are those fuel tanks on this. Remember we talked about that when we were running it before? Are they empty? That's the question. Oh, but no, it's because I have the van on it. Ah, uh, I'll have to test that. I didn't do it without this, so we'll change it back in a sec. But all right, I think, oh, wow. I got to watch that. And uh, so we need to repair the truck because that was bad. That was a really bad hit, actually. But that's what we have the repair kit for. And I think the place beyond the spruces is up this mountainside. So let's see if we can do this. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's going to be a 50-50 with this back on because this thing's pretty heavy. And like I said, I wouldn't do this. I would do this part with a scout and then have this truck on standby to rescue the scout just in case. But no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And that that's not surprising. So, yeah, I wouldn't use it for that. Like I said, we could test it, but there's the answer to that. Uh, if you had the flatbed only and not that big service trailer on the back, I would say it would work. But because that's on there, it just makes it way too top heavy. All right, so let's go ahead and recover this. And I want to see something really quick. If we customize this and we don't have this big thing on, we just have the sideboard bed. Oh, wait. 
Oh, and by the way, uh, one of the things I did not cover, you can also use this as a saddle low and saddle high truck. <laughs> And it'll be pretty good, actually, because it's all-wheel drive and you have all-terrain tires. So it's actually going to perform well as a truck. Yeah, I mean, it, it may struggle a bit, but it's going to work. Um, let's see. What, does this regular trailer have um, the fuel tanks? Yes, it does. Can we access those? It doesn't look like they're showing. Hang on. Let's see. Well, let's see. Refuel. If it has a van body add-on, nope, it does not. So that's a little weird. When you put those on, it shows that those those fuel tanks on the back, but you can't access them unless you have the other portion of the truck put on. So that kind of stinks, but I, I don't know why they did that. But still, that's that. So let's do the last application that I think this truck's going to be good for. I'll be right back. Now, one of the nice things about the Step uh, 3364, you can see here in comparison to like the Tatra even, which is pretty much the same type of truck but horrible handling um it's less than half the price it's actually fairly affordable <laughs> very affordable so let's grab this we're gonna go into snow mode so we're gonna look and see yeah i'll just keep the engine stock uh we're gonna do off-road gearbox suspension raised of course tires i'm gonna go right for the because we're in i'm gonna show you what i think this is gonna be good for maybe i'm wrong but I've experienced this with um, other small trucks like this. Wow. And so I think it'll work with this truck also. We don't need the spare wheel. And then we're going to look at, let's see. Definitely want the fuel tanker on the back. Front side, nah. Rooftop, let's go with the, we'll go with these lights. We haven't tried those yet. Front bumper stock. Uh, I haven't done really much running with that either, so let's do that. Um, external horns, nah. Those little lights are cool, though. Exhaust, yeah. Make it look bad, bad arse. And we'll get some heavy Russian, uh, yeah, the weights. Uh, and then I'm going to make the truck, let's see, good for seeing in the winter. That looks pretty cool. Oh, I like the, that looks nice. It's like a bumblebee. That looks good too, though. The base colors. I just, all these colors are great. I love all these Russian color schemes. This is probably my favorite scheme. So we'll do that. There we go. Okay, so let's let's see if I'm right about this. I've been right before with this kind of truck. Uh, first of all, we're gonna get it back to morning, and we can test the lights out. There we go. But what I've seen with this kind of truck before, because it's low to the ground. Uh, it actually becomes a great Arctic Explorer truck. And the weight of that, uh, well, there's a bandit up there. The weight of the um, fuel tank on the back allows it to push through the snow so that we don't have issues with it, like, bogging down in snow like a lot of the trucks do. So look at this. Look at that. You know, we're, just in, we're in automatic, just running through the snow. Now, as far as climbing, I don't know. But we're going to get out there and run this truck some. No. This won't do any damage, really. Look at that. Look at that. You need your fuel delivered to you on a mountainside? We can do it. Now, will this get stuck in ice that collapses? Yes. However, because of the light weight, it probably will not collapse the ice as quickly as some of the larger trucks. But you can see here, we don't even have to worry about going through or around the snow. This truck just goes through it. Look at that. Nice and easy. Perfect, Seth. And ice handling is good. So this makes a good Lake uh, COVID Scout. Probably good for Alaska areas where other trucks and that's one of the things i've noticed there's many many trucks get bogged down by the snow um so when you have to do these and i'm trying to look for a section here where we go into deep snow where you have the snow with the mud underneath it just turns into this horrible quagmire and it takes hours to get through it but i think my my inkling is that this truck will just push through those sections and i'm 
looking for some of those sections here. Where'd you cook? Oh, I probably in the sink. And I'm not, of course, I'm, as I'm trying to show you this, I'm not finding any of those sections, but now here's where it'll struggle. The deep mud is the only place with these tires that we're going to have a hard time. And it's not that bad, but it is, it is struggling, you can see here. So here's where those big f floaty monster truck tires would help. I forgot about the crunchy ice. I love that part. <laughs> it is a pain to drive over, but it is pretty cool to see too. Like that whole crunchiness. But if the roads are bad, then you can just, you know, enough of that and you can just go around them, you know, and that's the whole idea. I'm trying to find a deep snow part and it looks like we're coming up to one here. So that's good. This is what I wanted to test out. I think you're going to find that in low plus or even in automatic, this truck will just, yeah, see, in the other trucks, they get they get bogged down in this, like the Jeep. The Jeep gets stuck when you go through this stuff. Um, oh, where did the road go? What? But not so much this truck. It just plows right through. Look at that. So I had a feeling that this truck would be good. This truck's good at this. Thank you. Uh, the Tatra is good at this. The uh, Ford F750 is good at this kind of terrain. So there's very few trucks that do the snow well, but this is one of them. And I knew as soon as I saw its small size and the ability to put that big fuel tank on, I knew this would be a good snow truck. And that's, you know, we need those because we have a lot of maps where we have to do a lot of off-road exploration. And now here's where we're pushing the limits of it. Oh boy. And now we're in it though, oh boy. And that is seriously stuck. <laughs> now, I think the 750 would probably get through that, but that stinks. So I got to I got to test. I want to see something real quick. I'll be right back. So I brought the Tatra 803 Arch Nemesis to our uh, step 3364 uh, to see if he's a better snow machine. Oh, look at this. Look at that. This is one of those weird... Now, okay, he's going to get bogged down, too. All right, so no, it's not. He's a little better. But look, he's going. I mean, this is one of the weird things about this Tatra. There's some strange snow thing that he... Now he's getting bogged. This is a big mess here, though. And then, so reasonably, it is... It does make sense that we are stuck here. Um, and he's stuck, too, so... Can you winch to something? Why does it always winch to the smallest trees first? It breaks all the trees first, and then it actually winches to something useful. Anyway, so that's about, they're about the same there. Um, but I would say these two, tr these two trucks are the best snow exploration trucks. They carry a lot of fuel. The only downside is if you do flip, you're in trouble because there's, they're not scouts. Um, but um, between the two of them, these are probably the two best for snow exploration and they do really well until you get into stuff like this. But for the most part, they fly through the snow. Once again, the F750 is also a great truck for this kind of exploration. Uh, but anyway, I am. Um, so in closing, the question that everybody always asks, is it worth it? I mean, I don't know, man. You got to decide for yourself. I know there's a lot of people that get angry about having to pay extra for DLCs uh, when you already paid for the season. Uh, that's been something that's been going on since the game's been out. Personally, I don't mind throwing the developers a couple bucks when they do something cool. So uh, we've paid, you know, 80 bucks for two years of, I mean, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of content. I've literally probably put six to 800 hours into SnowRunner. Uh, and I'm not even close to being done. So if I got to give them five bucks every six months for another truck, I mean, really, honestly, they come out with these once every four or five months. Um, it's no skin off my back. It's four bucks. It costs less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks. And I'm going to get a lot of fun out of this truck. So I, I think of it that way. A lot of people look at it real negatively. Oh, it's four bucks. I can't believe it. Yeah, okay. But think of it this way. Once again, if I go to the grocery store, I can't even get a head of broccoli or a package of tomatoes. 
for less than six bucks. You know, chicken's ten bucks. Here's something for four dollars. This is not a bad deal, and I will definitely get my fun out of it. So yes, it is worth it. But secondly, I really like this. Out of all the ones that have come out, I really, really like this. This one and the Jeep have been my two favorites so far. The reason being is that this is a classic Russian truck. Um, and from playing the other spin tires and mud runner, we had this truck quite a bit. We've seen it a, a bit in those games, and it's really neat to see it so high detailed compared to our old versions that were in those games. This is a much higher detail model. The interior is all there. Uh, we've got all kinds of options for it, and it just is a bad arse looking Russian truck. Small truck for sure, maybe not so useful for the game overall. But this is a cool truck, and that's what I like when they do this kind of stuff. And it is a good-looking Russian truck. So uh, I hope they do more of these Russian truck DLCs. Like I said, I would love to see Zill, like the 130 and the 131, or the B30 or B130, come back. I would love to see the 131. I would love to see the Ural uh, 4320 come back. I know we have, like, a modern version of it, but it's not under the... Uh, What's the name that they use? Um, I can't remember. The, the, we have the 4320 in the game, but uh, the Voron, that's it. It's a modernized version. It is not the original version. Uh, love to see the old Gazes and Mazes. They're just cool Russian military trucks. Uh, and so here's what, the first one, and hopefully this will not be the end of it, but we'll see more and more of these. But what a neat little truck. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. I really had a lot of fun making it, and I think that this is definitely a worthwhile truck. Uh, as we pour out that black smoke, rolling coal in the in the winter in the Russian winters, a very very useful truck, and it's going to be uh, probably a big help to you beginning game, also for snow exploration. Like I said, this is a good snow explorer, so I would go right to this truck when I get onto Alaska or into like COVID. I'm going to grab this truck out of my garage and go explore with it. Um, bring a friend, so if you tip, you can get back over again, but. Uh, really, the only truck that probably would be better than this would be the Ford F750. But that truck's a pain in the butt to get. This one you just have if you buy the DLC. You can use it right away. You don't have to wait. So, have a great night, guys. Be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up always help. And we'll see you in the wastelands of SnowRunner again at some point. And I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I will definitely be using this truck in my series. And I am really happy with the Crocodile. It is a cool-looking truck. So, we'll see you next time. Bye.